imposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. President Putin declared in the autumn of 2021, and he actually sent a, a draft treaty that he wanted NATO to sign to promise no more NATO enlargement. So he went to war to prevent uh, uh, NATO, uh, more NATO uh, close to his borders. He has Oh, when the wall came down in the Soviet Union, Europe, Gorbachev destroyed himself politically by doing something that was very, very courageous. He went to Bush and he said, I'm going to allow you to reunify Germany under a NATO army. I'm going to remove 450,000 Soviet troops, but I want your commitment. After that, you will not move NATO one inch to the east, and we solemnly swore we wouldn't do it. Well, then in 97, Brzezinski, who was the first of the neocons, said, we're going to move NATO a thousand miles to the east and take 15 countries into it and surround the Soviet Union. So then we not only move it into 14 new nations, but we unilaterally walk away from our two nuclear weapons treaties with the Russians. And we put Aegis missile systems in Romania and Poland. 12 minutes from Moscow. When, when Russians did that to Cuba in 62, we came this close to nuclear war to, until they removed them. So. One complaint I often hear from Russian officials is that 30 years ago, a, a promise was made by the West to Moscow that NATO would not enlarge and move closer to, to Russia's borders. And Russia says the West deceived Moscow. First of all, uh, no sort, such promise was uh, made. But second, just the idea that uh, uh, Washington or a big Western ally should promise that to Moscow is an idea based on a totally wrong assumption that big countries can promise something on behalf of a small countries. We then overthrow the Ukraine government. In 2014, their elected government and put in a Western sympathetic government. Russia then has to go into Crimea because they have a port, because they're only warm water port. And they know the new government that we just installed is going to invite the U.S. Navy into their port. So Russia then went into Crimea without firing a shot, because the people of Crimea are, are Russian. Then the new Ukrainian government we installed started killing ethnic Russians in Donbass and Lugansk and they voted to leave and join Russia. Putin said, I don't want them. Let's give them protection and give them semi-autonomy and make an agreement to keep NATO out of Ukraine. That treaty was written by Germany, France, Russia and England. The Minsk Accords. He runs in 2019. He's an actor. Why did he get elected with 70% of the vote? Because he promised to sign the Minsk Accords. He promised peace. He gets in there and he pivots. Nobody can explain why, but we know why. Because he was threatened with death by ultra-rightists in his government and a withdrawal of support by the United States by Victoria Nuland, who's the leading neocon in the State Department. We told him he could not sign it. So then the Russians go in, they don't send a big army, they only send 40,000 people. It's a nation of 44 million people. They clearly do not intend to conquer Ukraine, but they want us back at the negotiating table. We won't allow Zelensky to go back, so he goes to Israel and Turkey and says, will you please help me negotiate a treaty? The Russians just want to guarantee that Ukraine won't join NATO. Zelensky signs the treaty, Putin's people sign the treaty and Putin starts withdrawing the Russian troops in good faith. And what happens? Joe Biden sends Boris Johnson, the British Prime Minister, over to Ukraine in April and forces him to tear up the treaty. And since then, 450,000 kids have died who none of them should have died. For every one Russian that dies, five to eight Ukrainians die and they don't have any men left. 
you know, we're giving them all these weapons, but they don't have men left. It's a catastrophe, and we look kind of like the aggressor. That's the way the rest of the world sees us. This is a war that should have never happened. The big military contractors want to add new countries to NATO all the time. Why? Because then that country has to conform its military purchases to NATO weapon specifications, which means certain companies, Northrop North Grumman, Raytheon, General Dynamics, Boeing, and Lockheed, get a trapped market. And who do you think owns every one of those companies? Yeah, BlackRock. Number two, most important, Ukraine has to put all of its government-owned assets up for sale to multinational corporations, including all of its agricultural land. The biggest single asset in Europe is the richest farmland in the world. It's the breadbasket of Europe. 500,000 kids almost. Ukrainians have died to keep that land as part of Ukraine. They've already sold 30% of it. The buyers were DuPont, Cargill, and Monsanto. Who do you think owns all of those companies? BlackRock. Yeah, BlackRock. And then in December, President Biden gave out the contract to rebuild Ukraine. And who do you think got that contract? BlackRock. So they're doing this right in front of us. They don't even care that we know anymore because they know that they can get away with it.